Yes, Lord, my chains are gone. I want to take it up further and declare MCO is gone. The virus is gone in the name of Jesus. We declare that, Lord. And your word will not drop to the ground void. Bless your holy name. guys to just stay there for a while and we're going to just partner with the Spirit in doing something that the Lord is just leading us in a, in a very peculiar direction. Thank you, Lord. Now, this is what I want you to hear first before, so you understand. You need to, you need to understand something before you are able to participate and to activate your your faith and authority in doing so. So I want to give you understanding first. Give me very quickly Isaiah 55, verse 10 and verse 11. Isaiah 55, verse 10 and verse 11. Now you see something here. It says, As the rain comes down and the snow from heaven, and they do not return there, but water the earth, and make it bring forth and bud, now the rain may drop at 3 o'clock, but at 5 o'clock and 6 o'clock, the ground is still wet, even after the rain stops. Do you get that? Snow may drop for an hour, but after that, the entire night, the whole land may be covered by snow. Do you see the effect of that? That is the prophetic word, all right? That it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. I want you to understand a whole different realm of prophetic decree tonight. Verse 11 says, So shall my word that goes forth from my mouth, it shall not return to me void like the rain, like the snow. It shall not, it will be poured out and it shall carry forth its purpose. Even after the word stop, the, here this, the effect of the word is still working. Are you understanding this? That's the power of the prophetic word. Even after you have proclaim the word, the word has stopped, but the effect is still working. I give you one example. In the year 2019, I decree a word that says women, married women that has been barren for many years will give birth. I gave the word in the church. One month later, I went to Klang. There was a sister who had been married for many years, no children. And she came and that word that I gave in the church here in Penang, that word is still ringing in the ram, in the dimension. And she came for the ministry. I just said that everyone that wants to be fruitful in Klang, they shall be fruitful. She sent me a message last year. She is now pregnant, already given birth. Not only pregnant, already given birth. You see that? The prophetic word rings in the air. The rain comes, the ground is still soft after the rain stops. Do you get that? Now, hear this. We are going to declare in a moment every bondage over God's people, whether they are in the house tonight or they'll be coming to the church in one month's time, but the word rings because it's not going to return to God. What? Do you get that? Like rain and snow is going to be released tonight, but the effective working power of the word remains in the spiritual realm. That when they come here one week later, one month later, the word still works in them. Do you get that? And there are also people because the prophetic word transcends geographical location I mentioned just now. There are people who are outside because I saw just now when Pastor Felix was declaring wrong relationships to be made right. I saw 
someone outside the church being hear this, being touched by that word. Now you may say, Pastor, but we are not on live stream. You don't need live stream. Did you hear what I just say? You don't need live stream. Why? Give me Psalms 103, verse 20. I show you heaven's live stream. Psalms 103, verse 20. Angels, they do His word, heeding the voice of His word. When you release a word in the prophetic realm, angels carry that word to the environment, to the region, even beyond the nation. And they carry that word to whoever who needs that word because it's under the sphere of your ministry. Do you get that? There are people who are not in church today. They are going to, they are going to be, here it is, blessed by the word. Because the word goes forth, it does not return void. That is the power of the prophetic decree. Fertilizer, I mentioned just now. It helps congested soil to expand so that seed can germinate. Number two, why does it help the soil to expand so that the roots can go deeper? Did you hear that? Revelation is progressive. The Lord just add on more. When you have a fertilizing service like this, in worship, in the declaration of the prophetic, in interacting with the Holy Spirit, in tongues, in known languages, whatever it is, in soaking, your roots go deeper. Why? The soil expands. Soil that is hardened will now become softened so that your roots, and as the roots go deeper, the plants go higher. The, the fertilizer helps the soil to become fertile so that the tree can be productive. Did you get that? So now we are being fertilized. And we are going to declare because part of the fertilizing process is to declare the Word of God and to carry forth its purpose because tonight the Lord wants to set people free because His amazing grace. Remember, He said to us in Acts 4.33, great grace, apostolic grace will be given. Great grace, great power will be given to the last day church. And so today, as we sing this again, as we minister under the law, we are going to declare and hear this. You you may have friends, you may have family members, friends or colleagues who are trapped perhaps in some kind of addiction, trapped in some kind of wrong relationship, trapped in some kind of predicament or situation. Tonight, the power of the Word is going to send forth. An effective working power of the Word is going to be sent forth to work in their life. Hallelujah. Oh yes, Lord. Father, we thank you tonight that your amazing grace is going to set people free. Free from wrong behavior. Free, Lord, from any kind of <laughs> of slavery, confinement, addiction, bondages, vices, wrong associations. Set them free, Lord, tonight from wrong emotions from wrong mentality, wrong perspectives, wrong identity. Tonight, Father, we declare the Word of God that is going to be sent forth. And the ministry angels will carry forth the Word, heeding the Word of the Lord that will set people free tonight. Barahala hehehe mahana magori their chains are gone tonight. I declare this over you, people of God. Your chains are gone. Your prison doors are open.
I'm holding a key in my hand. It's so heavy, I cannot hold it alone. <laughs> it's so heavy, Tiara. Hold this key together. It's so heavy. It's the key to open. The key to unlock. And it will grow. It will grow, and it will grow. And church, we need you to come and hold this key together with us. It's too heavy for a person. It's too heavy for me and my wife to hold this key. We need you to come and hold this key together with us. key to open and to unlock everything that's of God. Things are opening in stages, level by level, precept upon precept, door by door, gate by gate. And as you faithfully steward the keys that I've given to you, you shall navigate the glory ram of my treasuries and you'll be able to unlock the greatness of my wealth, my spiritual wealth and every blessing that I have purpose for you and for my people and for the land that I've asked you to walk on. There are things that are too great and too bright even for your eyes to behold at this moment. But as you walk alongside my spirit that I have given to you, and as you walk alongside that, and as you steward what I have bestowed upon you, your eyes, your ears, and your hearts will gradually adapt itself to the glory of the brightness and the glory of the greatness and the glory of the vastness of my treasuries in heaven that I have purpose for the earth. And so walk 
walk, walk humbly. Walk in the lowliness of the flesh and the loftiness of the spirit. Walk and align yourself with my heart and it shall be a sign unto you the glorious riches of heaven. This is the word of the Lord for you, ARC. Glory to your name, Lord. Glory to your name. You may be seated, Tim. You may be seated. Glory. Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 1, verse 2, verse 3. The Lord is taking over the service and is giving us a new message right now. Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 1. I will stand my watch and set myself on the rampart or the tower and watch to see what he will say to me and what I will answer when I'm corrected. Now, first of all, I pray that every prophet will hear these words. Prophets will hear these words. The word here, my watch, mesh meraf in the Hebrew. Mesh meraf is an office that many prophets have neglected. When you hold the office of a prophet, you must understand the importance of mesh meraf. I will stand my mesh meraf, my office. It's in the office that assignment is given. It's in the office that authority is being released. Outside of the office, none of this can happen. So every prophet has to understand mesh meraf. Because it's in the office when you stand your watch in the office of the Mish Merav. Now the Mish Merav here in the Hebrew can also mean a sentry, a watchtower, a sentry. Every prophetic ministers are called to be watchmen. Any prophet who is not a watchman is not a prophet but a puppet. Every prophet must be a watchman. What is a watchman? One who watches in the spiritual realm. We are coming into an era where God is releasing a threefold, a three-court anointing upon the prophets called the Samuel anointing, the Elijah anointing, and the Issachar anointing. And you need all three. You need to be a teaching prophet, a power prophet, and a discerning prophet. You must know what is the oracle of God that you may teach it to the body of Christ to equip the saints. Then you must know how to demonstrate the power of the word. And then you must also, ones who know the timeline of God's calendar and events. You need all three. And so the Mishmarav, here in the chapter of Habakkuk chapter 2, was where Habakkuk was stirred, was drawn to, and this sentry, now again, I want to say this does not only apply to the prophet, even though it is a must. It is the number one criteria for every prophet to have a Mishmarav. But it does not only apply to prophet, it applies to everyone in the body of Christ because we are in the prophetic era. Remember, it was 
It was the prophetic of era of Samuel, the first, the, 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 I would say the head chief prophets of that time that ushered in the monarchy of kings. So we are in the last days where the prophetic era will usher in the monarchy of King Jesus to reign over everything. Now, coming back to this again, I will stand my watch. I will take up the watchman responsibility. This is for the church. I will take up the sentry. And the sentry is the threshold between the spiritual and the natural. Meaning that when you are at the sentry of this Mishmarav, you are able to interact with the spiritual and to administer what you receive in the spiritual unto the natural, unto the earth. That's called a sentry. And I will stand my watch and I will set myself on the tower. Now, you don't have to have a penthouse tower. You don't have to go up to Penang Hill. That tower means your secret place with the Lord. I will set myself on the tower, the secret place. Sometimes your tower can be your bathroom. You get that? Sometimes your toilet can be your secret place because that's where you finally have peace and flush all the junks away. Your secret place can be your garden. It can even be your car. It can be anywhere where you can interact with the Spirit of God undisturbed, unperturbed. Coming back to these. And then, I will watch to see what he will say. So, God speaks very clearly and very directly to those who fulfill the criteria of having a mishmaraf. Meaning that when you know you are called to be a priesthood, you are called to stand at the sentry. You know what's a sentry? The God house. Hear me, people of God. As Christians, you are called to stand in the God house of the spiritual and the natural. Because as priests, you minister under the Lord and you represent God to the people. We are the royal priesthood. So when you fulfill this criteria, the first one, you have a mishmaraf, and that you will determine, because the word set means to have a predetermined purpose. It means that you make plans, you determine, you plan your time, you schedule your time, and you purpose it, you have a will to do it, that you will have a secret place, a time with God every day of your life. That's called setting yourself on a rampart. When you do that, now God sees you are being prepared. Now God sees you are ready to receive. Are you hearing me? God releases something that he doesn't want to waste. So when you are ready, God releases something to you so that it's not wasted on you. So when you have that rampart, secret place of the Lord, and you know that this is part of your responsibility as a priesthood, your mishmarah before God, then you'll be able to peer. The word watch there in verse 1 again. The second word watch here, this is mishmarah, this is safar. Now, then you'll be able to safar. What is safar? Safar means you are able to pierce a level of darkness or a shield. It, safar can, can be best illustrated by an arrow piercing a shield of armor. Ho. Oh. Seeing visions in the spirit is like an arrow being released to pierce the rams of darkness or the rams or whatever resistance that prevent you from peering into the other side into the realms of glory. So, here, now this word safar is very different from kazon. 
Because another word for inner vision, close vision is kazon. So everyone can have kazon, but not everybody has experienced safar. Do you hear what I'm saying? Because safar is that you open your eyes and you start to see things in the spirit, just like that, open vision, that's safar. Now coming back to this, that you will be able to see what he will say. Now, isn't that interesting? Because what he will say is words, but the words are illustrated into visions. Do you get that? He didn't say that you will hear you know, what he will say. He said you will see what he will say. Meaning that his words now becoming pictures in your life. Isn't that wonderful? When God speaks something, it becomes pictures. Not hear what he say, but see what he say. And seeing what he say is also realizing or activating and appropriating every word that comes forth from his mouth that they will become materialized in the natural. You'll be able to see the testimony of his word. And then, when God starts to speak, all right, then hear Habakkuk say, then I, and what I will answer, because God, when he wants to speak to you, number one, he invites you to a dialogue. You did hear me. I say when God speaks to you, he invites you to a conversation, a dialogue. Because he wants to speak to you, and he wants to hear what you will answer. And in that dialogue, in that interacting of speaking with God, speaking to God and God speaking back to you, you will see correction taking place. Correction here in the Hebrew can also mean alignment. Because sometimes we are out of alignment. We need to be realigned. That's why God corrects us. So it's in that peering into the other side. Peering into the spiritual. The safar also means this. Illustrate this Holy Spirit. You are, you are on a boat. You've been sailing for three weeks, a bit seasick, waiting to land on land. And you're waiting to set your feet on some island and have some fresh coconut juice. Right? And you are on that boat. And you've been watching every day for land. Where is the land? Where is Penang Island? <laughs> Francis Light. <laughs> and, and now you've been sailing, all right? So you'll be waiting at the edge of the boat and you are looking, sometimes with a telescope. That's called safar. That's called leaning forward. That's called seeing with anticipation. Are you hearing me? There are a lot of times we see things, but we don't anticipate in what we are seeing. Meaning that we see, 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 look, look, see, see, law. Nothing happened, all see, law. All right? But when you see it in the spirit, you expect something to come. You see, Elijah, Elijah he saw the rain coming, and he asked his servant to go and see. And the servant went, first time nothing happened. Some of us, when we see nothing happened, we give up. But the servant went second time. Nothing happened, third time. Nothing happened, fourth time. Until he started to see the feast of cloud. Or the cloud the size of a feast. Okay? And then they keep on seeing. As, as you keep on seeing and keep on anticipating and interacting with what you are seeing, you usher in the promise. You usher in what God has for you by, first of all, having sights to see into the other side. You see, I want to say this to you. I am seeing five years into the promise of God for what is going to happen here in this place. Because the Lord spoke to me, you'll be given land. You'll be given everything to become a facility for revival. That's called suffering. <laughs> Making a word here, safari. There's no Hebrew word for safari, okay? That's called safar, all right? Looking, peering into the future. 
that's understanding God's timeline because there are things that God revealed to us today which is not supposed to be released today or tomorrow, but it's for next month and next year. All right? That's understanding the realm of the prophetic. So there are things that God reveals to me that I cannot share with you. I'm sorry because it's not for now. Because if I share it now, the word is wasted. So it's the right time of sharing something that is right at the right season. One verse in Proverbs. Words spoken at the right time are like golden apples served on a silver platter. I always remember the Hokkien words for this. That was my first message when I preached in the Hokkien church. Hallelujah. Praise God. Okay, now coming back to this. Thank you, Lord. And this is where the Lord is taking us to. This is going to be just short and sweet and it's beautiful. Now, go to Psalms, chapter 5, verse 3. My voice you shall hear in the morning, O Lord, in the morning I will direct it to you and I will look up. The word look there is safar. Related to Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 1. The word look, Safar. So let's dissect this verse here and let's see what we can glean from it tonight. First of all, the psalmist King David here says, My voice you shall hear in the morning, not my complaints. My voice, Lord, it means that. David has such a passionate devotion unto God that he make it his point or his first point, his first priority in life that every time he woke up, hear this, the first thing that he do is he greet God good morning. Do you hear that? Because he said, my voice you shall hear in the morning. The first thing that he wants to utter from his mouth is praises unto God. The first thing that he wants to say in the day is thanksgiving to God. My voice you shall hear. Can, can I just take, take you to this uh, wonderful experience that I had many years ago? I, I was awakened very early before the sun came out. There was the time when birds were singing. You know, chirping birds chirp their bird song before the sun rises early in the morning. Am I talking to people in the house? Right? Birds, they chirp twice a day. Sunrise and sunset. Because they praise God. <laughs> and the birds were chirping before the sun rise. And I was seated at my desk early before the sunrise. And I heard the Holy Spirit so clearly. He says, the birds are praising me. And so birds were chirping. They were praising God in birds' language. No need to ask for interpretation when birds sing. La. Hallelujah. Praise God. <laughs> so the first thing in the day before the dawn breaks, birds were giving God their voices. Do you get that? And that applies to us how much more we are His choice creation. That we are to release our voices unto the Lord. At least when you wake up, you greet Him, good morning. Fifteen years ago, I was given a book written by Benny Hinn, Good Morning Holy Spirit. And after I read the book, I want to put it to test, lah, try and see whether it works or not. And so, the next day, I woke up. Good morning, Holy Spirit. Nothing happened. 
Second time, good morning, Holy Spirit. You see, sometimes God tests your persistence. All right? He tests whether you are really persistent or not. So, second day, nothing happened. Third day, I think it was the fourth day or fifth day. Good morning, Holy Spirit. Before I got out of the bed, an audible voice spoke back to me. Good morning, Terence. He's real, brother. He's real. First, and from that time onwards, I make it a point that every time I get up, it doesn't matter whether you get up before the sun rises or you get up before lunch is served. Some of you, I know, you get up before lunch is served. But 11.59, mor still morning. <laughs> so you get up 11.59, whether it's whatever the time is, the first thing you do, good morning, Lord. Let your voice be heard. Now, this is where I'm taking you to. Look at the verse again in verse 3. In the morning, you see, I will direct it to you. And then it says, I will look up. But many times we wake up in the morning, we also look up. But we look at the ceiling looking for lizard. <laughs> or looking at cobwebs. <laughs> oh my, I remember cobwebs. <laughs> you know, I, I was in the mission field last time. In Borneo. In, in, uh, and there was this uh, American guy. And every morning, we wake up very early, you know. And every morning, I would see him sitting under a tree somewhere outside. Or he'll be, he'll, he'll be at the, the paddy field, you know. Sawa, paddy, paddy field. All right? He'll be there uh, talking to God. And then... I was curious. One day I asked him, American guy, I asked him this. I said, how come you are always outside, outdoors, early in the morning? And you know what he said to me? He said, because when I talk to God, I must look at the open sky. I want to look at the sky so I can talk directly to God. Wow. I was thinking, what a holy man, devout man. I wanted him to lay hands on me so I can receive that kind of... A, but thank God I did not. You know why? Because later on, I found out he's cuckoo. <laughs> Hallelujah. So it doesn't mean that you must go out to the open sky because you can be cuckoo or so, you know. Hallelujah. Oh, praise. Thank God he didn't lay hands on me. Hallelujah. Wonderful Jesus. Now, it doesn't mean that you have to look at the open sky because God is not in the sky. Hello? The kingdom of God is not up there. It's here within you. This is the access, right? Now, you can be in the toilet. <laughs> you can still have look up, all right? Now, the word look up here, safar, means that every time you wake up, the first thing, you greet God. Good morning, Father. Good morning, Jesus. Good morning, Holy Spirit. Or you just thank Him for the day. And then you look up. Meaning that you look with anticipation. Anticipating what? Anticipate His presence to come on you. I'm hearing something now. When you know how to look up, you will know how to look at and to look through. What a word, Lord. Thank you for that. Say it again. When you know how to look up at God, you'll be able to look at everything in life throughout that day and you'll be able to look through all things with the eyes of God. Did you hear that? When you know how to look up, you'll be able to look at and to look through because you'll be seeing things with the eyes of God. What a wonderful word, Lord. Thank you for that. Now, hear this. When you look up, 
the first thing that you do in the morning when you give when you give God the offering of your praises, your thanksgiving, your greetings. You welcome him by looking up, by peering into the spiritual realm where God abides. Peering in the spirit, looking up to anticipate that heaven will invade you. You get that? And when you look up to the point where now you feel the presence, you feel the assurance of the nearness of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit starts to become real to you. Now, I want to give you one, one tip, I would say. Not tip, la, Lord. they don't want tip, they want blessing. Tip is small change. I want to give you this. How do you know you are in God's presence? Very simple, practical application. You don't need to feel all the goosebumps. Whoa, shit, the rubber, and you start checking. <laughs> that one is extreme presence. <laughs> all right? Uh -huh. How do you know you are in God's presence? Let me start by telling you how you know you are not in God's presence. When you are not in God's presence, you always give yourself excuse to do other things. For example, you lock yourself in the room. You wait on God, you pray, you do this, you worship. But your mind is thinking, oh, yeah, I got this to do, I got to go to the mall, I got to do my laundry, I got to do this, I got to do that. You are not in God's presence. You get that? You always give yourself excuse. You can't wait for the service to end. Hallelujah. Oh, now you know. You can't wait for the preacher to shut up and then you can go home. You are not in God's presence. But when you are in God's presence, you will tell yourself, Oh, I can go to the mall tomorrow. I can do my laundry tomorrow. I can do other things. I want to give God first my priority. I want to just give Him this time. You are in God's presence. You get that? When you put God first and you want to give your attention to God, you are in His presence. That's how you know. You don't need all the physical, tangible manifestation. The moment you start to focus on God and you treasure the time, you treasure the time you are giving to Him. You are in His presence. That's how you know. Right now, come back to this again. When you are able to start your day by giving Him your voice, your devotional voice of thanksgiving, greeting, welcome, look up to Him. Sometimes, this is what I do. Sometimes I just stand up and I just lift up my hands. I say, Lord, hold my hands throughout the day. I want you to walk with me today. And I, I feel something. I feel like God is touching me. But like I say, you don't have to feel it. It's when you know that there is a peace coming upon you. That's the assurance that He is near. You are in His presence. Now, another word that I want you to hear. When you look up, you are inviting the presence to come. Now, hear this. When you invite God to the table of your decisions, you will never have delusions and deceptions, but you will always have precisions. What a word, Lord. Thank you for that again. Many times we make wrong decisions in life and we have all kinds of delusions and deceptions. It's because we did not invite God into our decisions. That's why we mess up and we make wrong choices and wrong decisions. But when you start to look up, it's not just looking for lizards, right? Say, you know? <laughs> you're looking at the, you know, you're peering beyond your ceiling. Looking with eyes, just imagining God and just beholding God. That's another word, beholding Him. 
And then you invite him into your everyday decision. You will never make a wrong choice. Even if you are tempted or enticed to make a wrong turn, God will always navigate you back to the right path. Oh, yes. Even if you, you know, make wrong decision, there will be a stirring inside of you and say, no, don't sign that paper. Do you hear what I just said? Because... When you invite him to the table of your decisions, you will always make right choices because the presence guide you each day. Oh Lord, look up every day. Look up to him. That is the secret of intimacy. And not only that, that is one of the secret of having the mishmarav, of beholding, hearing, and having a dialogue conversation with God. And God will start to download to you. Look at now Habakkuk again and look at chapter 2 and verse 2 and verse 3. And now God will download to you Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 2. And the Lord answered, and now he says, write the vision. You see, you are, your eyes will be enlightened. Now you are able to journal what you are seeing, and it will be made plain to you. The word tablets there means a piece of paper for our contemporary term, right? You will be able to, to dialogue and write down what God wants to say to you. He made the vision plain to you and that when you receive it, there is such an excitement that you will run with the word. You see, if people are not excited, they just walk God say, okay, la, I walk. And sometimes people limp with the word. But now when you hear directly and clearly, you run with the word. Because there is an excitement. You know, and you know that when God speaks, it shall come to pass. It's going to happen. And now in verse 3, and sometimes the vision is for an appointed time. It's not for last year. Maybe it's for this year. And if it's not for this year, it may be for next year. There is an appointed time. But at the end, it will speak and it will not lie. Why? Because if it is God who spoke, it always comes to pass. And it says, though it tarries, we don't like the word tarry one. We only want Mary. Though it tarries, you see, the word of God, there are words that are fulfilled instantly. There are words that are fulfilled in the near future. But there are also words that can only be fulfilled after a time of tarrying. Tarrying is not wasteful waiting, but tarrying is a fruitful, a fruitful process because it kills off our flesh and prepares us to steward what is coming. Though it tarries, it says what? Wait for it. Because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Those who tarry for the word shall be carried by the word. I like the word. Thank you, Father. That's revelation. Those who tarry for the word, who waited on the word, the word will carry you. Those who tarry for the word shall be carried by the word. Wonderful, Lord. So, 
Habakkuk set an appointment with God every day. He had a watchtower fulfilling his responsibility. He went to his sentry and he would watch, he would suffer, he would look up. Do you get that? He would look up and he would wait on the Lord. And then there will start that dialogue. As you look up and you talk to him, he always talks back. You wish him good morning. Our father is not rude, you know. He's always polite. He will wish you back good morning too. And he will talk back. And by that, you will start to hear and understand and learn to recognize the still small voice. And you'll be able to have enlightenment of your eyes. Why is the Holy Spirit taking us into this today? Because I want you to hear this. You are in. You have already stepped into that. Though you are still at the threshold. Threshold means you just cross the line only, you know. Just cross only. Maybe still on the first step process. You are in the threshold of First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. What is 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9? Things that eyes has not seen. Things that ears has not heard. Things that heart has not known. You are at that threshold of stepping into something that your eyes has not seen. Your ears has not heard. You know, the Lord spoke to me this, uh, recently that when we enter the glory realm, some of you who have white hair, your white hair suddenly turned black. Eyes has not seen, you know. Hello? Some of you got no teeth, suddenly grow teeth. That's the glory realm. <laughs> People got no hand, the hand grows. That happened in Azusa. That's the glory realm. Where creative miracles, and hear this also, some of you, you, you will welcome this word. You will also have supernatural weight loss. I want that, Lord. Thank you. <laughs> oh, yes. You know, there was a, there was a, 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 a service, there was a service where, this, where this, this man, you know, with a really big barrel on the waistline, okay, in the glory, touched by the Spirit, he was slain. He got up, his trousers were so slain, you know. Because suddenly he lost, he lost, hear this, he lost 15 pounds of belly fat where the trousers become the testimony. <laughs> so next week he brought the trousers and hang it there, testimony. I gave you the word, you are going to see at the back part, we already have one crutches there, right? That crush just there will multiply. One day, people are going to walk in, they're going to see wheelchairs and crutches hanging by the ceiling. That's one day already, it's going to multiply. <laughs> Trophy rooms of God's testimony in miracles and healings. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So all those people who want weight loss will start to come to church. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Oh, yes. Eyes has not seen. Ears has not heard. You know, there was, I, I read this testimony happened in Brazil. It happened in Brazil. There was this adult woman. She had hormones problem. She could never grow taller. She was only three feet something. Three feet something. She came to that meeting in Brazil. The glory touched her. She grew two feet. Eyes has not seen. Hey, 
she grew two feet, you know, and became an average-sized woman. These are things that can happen. In, why? What, you say, how come these things can happen? Because in the glory realm, everything is made perfect. What is the glory realm? The glory realm is the habitation of God. Do you get that? When the habitation of God comes to earth, things that are imperfect will be made perfect. Hallelujah. This man of God went to a meeting and the glory came to that church. And there are many who are in the church who are, you know, involved in all kinds of vices. Some of them, under their jacket, you have to see a bottle of whiskey. Some of them, they have all their, not only, not only secret, but their, their narcotics. <laughs> yeah, go into church with all their marijuana and whatever they, they have in their little pockets. You know, this young generation went to that meeting. The glory came. Nobody said anything. These people from the back, they ran out to the front and they brought out their whiskey their whiskey, their liquor, their drugs, their secret, everything, they brought it out and they threw it at the altar. They say, we are set free. Just like that. That's the glory. That happened to me. I was immediately set free from my withdrawal system. From my withdrawal symptom, not system. Rabba, koshan, rabba. I was set free just like that. When the glory came upon me one night in my living room. Hallelujah. Eyes has not seen. We are in that realm. Why is the Holy Spirit preparing us in this message? Because He's telling you every day you look up. Because when you look up, you're able to see Him. And you'll be able to see things through his eyes. When you look up, you'll be able to look at, you'll be able to look through everything in life. Fertilizers, Lord. Thank you for that. Remember, the fertilizer and largest congested soil Soften, hardened soil so that the roots can grow deeper and soil become fertile. God is about to pour out something so glorious to His church, to His people, but the soil must be ready for the plants to grow. That's what is called revival. Soy must be made ready. And today, at the very first opening of churches in the north, in, Mal in, in Penang especially, because it's not just only an opening of churches again, but God is saying this to us, is also the opening of your hearts again. And as you open your hearts, heaven will also be open. Because open hearts always open up heaven. Hallelujah. And heaven will be open to the degree that you will see such treasuries. The treasuries of heaven is not just only wealth and blessing, but it's also miracles. And it's the things of God that eyes has not seen, ears has not heard. We're going to start to see those things happening. Oh, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. And I want to declare this again. Joshua, your wheelchair will be hanging at the back there. I want to declare that over you. And I will hold on to that word. Hallelujah. 
crutches will be hanging all over the place. People will come to the church and say, what's wrong with this church? How come enter only see all wheelchair and crutches hanging from the ceiling? You know? Testimonies. And we're going to tie ribbons to it. Because they are trophies. And I'm pressing in for this. The Lord has given me a key just now and I say that key, that key is heavy. I can't hold it alone. I need you, church, to come and hold it alongside us. It's the key of Isaiah 22, 22. Keys that open doors that no one can shut. That we can open doors to signs and wonders and miracles because the kingdom of God is not in word but is in power. Lord, thank you for your word today. So let this be a reminder to us every day. Let your voice rise up to him the first thing in the morning. And then you look up. But look up. <clears throat> Remember this. Look up means you... Behold God with anticipation, all right? Not just standing there and looking up until you've got neck pain, stiff neck. Doctor cannot look down. <laughs> got to go and see chiropractor. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right? Look up means you behold God, acknowledge God, and welcome God into your life every day. And you start to see favor. Your boss, your boss may have some conflict, some rifts with you, but suddenly you go to work that day, suddenly, you know, something changed. Because God, when He gives you favor, He gives you favor with also with men and women. Oh, yes. Suddenly, things will start to look better and better for you. Because now you are able to see everything. You are able to look at everything. And you were able to look through everything to see the roots. You have a, an enlightened perspective of everything. Because now, because you look up, now you are able to look at and look through all things with the eyes of God. And then you write it down. You journal what God says to you. You be surprised that many of the things that God is saying to you is going to happen this year. Some of them transcend into next year. But this year and next year, there's going to be great shiftings, people. Great shiftings. Why? Because we have come to the end of a Shemitah cycle. And we are stepping into a new cycle that will take us all the way to 2029. You must know God's timing for everything. 2021 to 2029. End of 2021 to 2029 is the glory era where white hair can become black hair and no hair can become curly hair. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to your name, Lord. Father, we thank you for this night. We thank you for the word that's been declared. And we know as the rain are sent forth to water the earth and the snow that falls, and it shall not return void. So shall your word be, that it has gone forth and it will carry its purpose, and it shall not return to you void, because it will fulfill its very purpose of its sending. Lord, we thank you that our eyes are about to see the things that we have never seen, that our ears are about to hear of such 
praise reports that we have never heard of before. And our hearts are going to encounter you and experience the things of the glory that we have never imagined before because your word says that you are able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think according to your mighty power that works in us. And with these, we are able to bring before you our thanksgiving and our praises, oh Lord, and our gratitude because in all these things, it is not about man, it's not about church, it's not about ministry, but it's about Jesus receiving all the glory because it is Jesus that is showing off. It has nothing to do with man. It's all about you, Lord, that the world will know you as the King of glory. And every mouth will be praising you, Lord. And to you belong the glory. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you that you have put us on your calendar. Do you hear what I just said? The Lord has put us on his calendar. What day, I don't know. He's not telling. Because he wants us to prepare now. Prepare the soil. Prepare your heart. Prepare yourself now. By looking up every day. Glory to your name. When you look up, heaven comes down. Glory to your name, Jesus. Bless your church with this today. The first Sabbath of this month of transition. This is a month of transition that does not start with one day nor end with one day, but it's a duration of a period of time that we are going to transit from level to level, glory to glory, percept upon percept, faith upon faith, love upon love, power upon power. O oh God Almighty, Take us on this journey. And Father, we say to you, prepare us, Lord. Grant us grace to walk this journey and to steward it well so that we can finish well. Hallelujah. Much, much more is coming. And you're going to have nights like this where the Holy Spirit will just take over and He changed everything. When you give Him the platform to speak and to move, it is beautiful. Receive everything the Lord has for you. Seal it, Lord, in your name. Amen and amen. Give him all the glory, people. All the glory.